probably nearly five years now after brewing for like like ten years as a home brewer. Mm -hmm. Um and like just with encouragement from the group that I belong to and other people, um, I decided to get my license and so far I haven't looked back. So how do you deal with um, supply issues? Do you run out um, or, uh, or do you yeah, make well, sure you don't um, run out? Or Well, last year was my first year um, at, actually at Medieval Legally. Aha. <laughs> 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 um, and I, I took my, – my poor car was so weighed down that it, it's lucky it got up the hill. Um, and I completely sold out. I had not a bottle left anywhere. <laughs> uh, and, so and I had to – you, you basically plan for the events, do you? And you sell at the events, or, or do you supply yeah, well, uh, oh, liquor stores as well? No, I don't supply liquor stores. I, my, most of my meat is sold through um, like weekend markets um, and medieval and the medieval fair here, which is coming up in about three or four weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and um, markets and um, shows like um, we have like agricultural shows. Um, like fairs, mm -hmm. um, and people coming and buying from me at home. Like they'll ring me up and say, "Can we come and get this?" Or a lot of it sold that way. Okay. Okay. So you never really had an issue with with supply as such. Like no, do you, no. You never had well, to turn people away because you've run out. Yes, I have. Uh, after oh, medieval okay. last, uh, uh, after medieval last year, when I didn't have anything left, I kept on. People kept on saying, "When are you going to have it back on the shelf? When are you going to have it back on the shelf?" And I said, "Yeah, meat take meat take its own sweet time, so you just have to wait." Mm -hmm. So, um, like with the um October, it was October last year is when I finally got it back on the shelf. From May to October, I had nothing. Okay, that's yeah, okay. So that's a that's a quite a challenge for you then when you go to a to a festival if you if you run out. Um, yeah. How are you coping with that? Are you now you know making a lot more? Um, um since, that's not going to be ready for the store I, to make sure you've got some after or, or not? Yeah. Um. No, I've got. I sh uh, unless people go completely nuts on me again. I hopefully I've because after that I've got another. Um, show to do because I've got a friend of mine who breeds Highland cattle, and he's got a um, uh, he's um, there's a Highland cattle show coming up here in South Australia in June, and he wants me to have a stall at the show. So hopefully I'll have stuff left for that. You gotta love an island coo. Oh, they're beautiful cows. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a, an email list for when you do have new stuff coming up? Um, can we can we go on and make a I, list? Um, well, usually, uh, if I've if I've got if I've got stuff back in stock, I usually put it up on my Facebook page or mm -hmm. um, or on my website because my website, like the bottles, will have sold out or whatever. And then when they finally come back into stock, then that sold out sign will be taken away. <laughs> so if we want to know it, we need to like your page on Facebook. This will meet him. Yes. The right. other thing, yeah, yeah. so I, I think we need a, a, a tour dates calendar so that we can go find you at the fairs as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, medieval in four weeks' time here in Adelaide. Mm hmm Yes, yeah, uh, 6th and 7th of, yeah, six and seventh of May, so it's about three or four weeks. Is that a skating event? An SCA? Um, um, we do have the SCA there, but it's lots of other reenactment groups like the MBG and um, just other um, and the Border yeah, Cults okay. who are medieval dancers. Um, it's like Renaissance and just fairs lots. here in the States. We have those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, lots of different groups just coming together and um, like the MBG and the SCA, SCA with their fighting, with their sword fights and... 
And we have <laughs> jousters. And... Are they real jousters or theatrical jousters? They're real jousters. Awesome. Oh yeah, we've we got a we've got a group jousting. around here too. We we had uh, some fairs that this have ain't real no jousters. medieval times. <laughs> yeah, we have we have some that are real jousters and some that we call WWF jousters, like you know worldwide mm-hmm. wrestling jousters. <laughs> yeah, because, because they do all that fake stuff and it's like it looks good but it's not real. But I've got friends who actually have attended the. There's a jousting school in Texas where they teach you how to joust, so you can go down there for like yep. I think it's like eight weeks, and uh, and they and you learn to joust. It's like oh I want to go there jousting. You. Yep, <laughs> I made an. Ar- I helped make an armor for a guy who did that course. Yeah, it's a neat course. Uh, several of my friends have been through that course. That uh, one of them works at the Maryland Renaissance Festival. But yeah, um, so Anne, if you want to get me the upcoming dates that you've got, I'll put them on the Got Me uh, uh, events calendar. Okay, um, six, the just, just, e- just email them. The... Just email them to me, honey. Oh, okay, I can app. do that. Yeah, it'll be easier. I can do that. But yeah, I mean, if you wanna if you wanna read them out here, that's cool too. But I'll put them on the just email them to me because I'll forget. <laughs> so I, I'm just fine. having a look at the uh, available maids, Vicky, and um, she's now got 17 in her lineup. Oh my gosh, which um, ones does she whew. have that we didn't try? Apple and cherry. Oh, on apple, apple oh. And cherry. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, which cherries did you use? That's the biggest one. Which cherries did I use? Um, I just sour cherries, sweet. Um, well, at, when I did that one, I think there was no fresh cherries available, so I just used the jars. You know, the jars of cherries. Mm, okay, you can oh, get sure. a supermarket. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, that, that was that. Part, I never would have thought. Yeah, that was just a, that was a twenty-five liter batch. That one. I think I've got about mm. ten bottles of that one left. Well, yeah, I've got about to get 10, some. 10 bottles. Wow, yeah. it, it really is boutique isn't it? You've just <laughs> got what you've got, and when it's out, run out, it's run out. <laughs> it's run out. <laughs> the word you're looking for is artisan. Artisan. <laughs> Artisanal need is what this is. Oh, yeah. Wow. It'll sell well in Brooklyn. Yeah, it would. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, all you'd have to do is like call it artisanal, and all the rich folks would like totally line up and buy it all day long. Um, right. <laughs> seriously, but that then word have is to pay all the it price. takes. Yeah. <laughs> I just liked her Facebook page, by the way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I think I already have, but I will have to go double check. But yeah. Yes, it did. Yeah. Yes, it did. Yeah. It says Vicky Rowe likes this. Oh, good. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you found it already then. <laughs> I sure did. All right. So, let's see. Filtering. Hmm. You, you, how, how long do, you, do they age um, in, in general once they're done? Well, well, the ones that um, Ricky and Hamish have had, like, they were finally back in the bottle from starting to brewery last May, back in the bottle by October. So the ones that wow. Vicky and Hamish had weren't that old. Huh. Do you have any yeah, old? about six months by the time we had them, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. They were good. Um, I haven't had any, like, that have had time to age before I've sold out. Uh, you haven't thought of maybe putting a few bottles aside to see what happens? I might do that, yeah. I, have, no, I haven't done that yet. <laughs> it doesn't last long enough. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't last long enough. Good problem, I guess. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Was there, what was the other flavor, Hamish? Um, sorry, I've just dipped onto your uh, Facebook sorry. page to make sure I'd liked it as well. Uh, that would be the Blackberry Blues is the other one that, that we missed yeah, out. Yeah, that Blackberry Blues, yeah, yeah, this one you missed out on. That one's only just gone back into the bottle, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Do, you, um, do you have one uh, that, that, that you've liked um, a lot? Uh, like, uh, the, do you have... My, my, you know, my personal favourite? Yeah. Ooh. Um... Yeah, well, I, I quite I, the Turkish delight and the apricot and chocolate because I like sweets. Ah, there you go. I would never have guessed. Hey, my, my, favorite, my favorite was the spiced one. I really like that spiced one so far. Now, granted, I've got five more to taste, and while I've 
stuck my tongue in the, uh, just tasted a little bit on the uh, <laughs> Turkish Delight and the orange and the apricot one. Um, I haven't tried the chili ones yet, so. Mm. Mm. The, chi- the chili ones are good. It depends how hot you like your chili. I'm a mild chili kind of gal. I'm not. I like. I like oh. chilies, but I don't like the blow the top of my head off chilies. Not my thing. Okay, it might be like almost <laughs> blow the top. <laughs> gonna be, is it gonna? Is it gonna hurt me? <laughs> hey, it's only an ounce. Oh. How bad can it be, right? <laughs> Vicky, oh, no. you're the one who keeps telling me everything in Australia can kill you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's like that, is it? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've I'm... got a customer who who actually mixes that one with balsamic vinegar and uses it as salad dressing. Oh. Oh, wow. That would be nice. That would be nice. Mm-hmm. Mm. I always think salad dressing is a bit of a waste of meat. But, Dennis, you know. Dennis says I'll be fine with the chili. <laughs> For those of you that eat salad, whatever that is. Yeah, that's that green <laughs> stuff they sell in the stores, Manny. You know, Can that be sprig of, That sprig of, uh, sprig of parsley they toss on top of the steak. Yeah. That's salad. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Dennis says I'll be fine with the chili. I'll let you know, Dennis. <laughs> well, myself, my son... Is my taste tester for the chili because if I have chili, I have no taste buds left. Well, yeah, it is. I always save the chili meats for last because they they ruin your they ruin your uh, your palate for anything else. So, whoa, smells good. Yes. Uh, the chocolate chili smells amazing. Oh, I feel left out. Ooh. I'm so. <laughs> Oh, I like that. Oh, it's hot. This <laughs> <laughs> is right. It sneaks up on you. It's it's a creeper bead, man. <laughs> oh, but it's not like super. Dennis is right. It's not super hot. It's it's good. I like that. Yeah, it does. It's, but you're like chocolate, chocolate, chili. <laughs> you get the hit of the chocolate and then the chili afterwards. Yeah. Nice. And then the last one is just the chili, chili one. And there's a lot more chili in the front on that one, but it's not it's not like a super hot. No, uh-uh. it's spicy, but not super hot. I wouldn't want to eat a whole bottle chocolate. of this. I'd have no I'd have no tongue taste buds left. You know, I mean, for like a day. But. I, I had a customer who I have a customer who brought a dozen of the chili ones. Mm. I was wonder, wondering who he was trying to torture. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> no, he's a chili head. Yes. Yeah. Well, there's a guy on the Mazer Cup staff who's a pepperhead. And um, when <laughs> when Mike Fall did 500 mil bottles, in which he dropped a ghost pepper into each one, and it was a sweet. Oh, mead. It was his Malia sweet mead, which is a it's an award winning uh, dessert mead, basically uh, about 12 or 13 percent, I think it is. And um, and he dropped us an entire ghost pepper into each one, each bottle. But Kyle loved it. Oh my God! Yeah, he was in, he was in Kyle heaven, man. He was just amazing. But uh, I took one tiny little sip and handed my glass to Kyle and said, "Gee, Mike, that's really um hot." <laughs> <laughs> that's really. Steve Kim's just done that. Got yeah. a picture up. Oh, then and you know, like you, your your face melts off. You know, it's ghost peppers. <laughs> so but um gosh this has been this has been really cool i think we learned a lot and of course now anybody who's listening or who listens to this later you'll probably be getting emails and phone calls about where can i get this honey and how much of it can i get can i can i get <laughs> a, you know and a container's worth <laughs> so so don't tell anybody where you get it <laughs> my, my secret recipe <laughs> No. <laughs> it's a trade secret. Nobody else can have it. Nope. <laughs> My seat. Make your own blend. Guess you have to bri- uh, bribe your beekeeper with some mead. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. you know, for people out there that are doing it, basically what she's doing is taking, you know, multiple honeys and messing with it until she gets a flavor profile that she likes, that's unique. Yeah. Is it fairly consistent, Definitely. or do you have to adjust it every year with the different flows? I'd probably um, adjust it with the different 
opens um, 